So Raspberry Pi recently launched the Compute Module 5, basically the guts of a Raspberry Pi 5 put onto a Compute Module. And there's also the Compute Module 5 development kit, which means you get the Compute Module itself, you get an I.O. board, a case, power supply, cables, heatsink, everything you need to get yourself started. In this video, I want to do a review of the development kit, which means an unboxing and a look at what you get. Along the way, of course, we're gonna look at what is the Compute Module 5, what do you get on the I.O. board, and so on. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So as I mentioned, the Compute Module 5 is basically the innards of a Raspberry Pi 5. Take away all the ports and the pet headers and all that kind of stuff, and then put it onto a module that can be embedded in different applications. Now, there are three main ways to use a Compute Module. The first way is that you are a hardware designer and you are developing a product, whether that is a smart device, whether that's some kind of networking device, or it's some kind of uh, embedded consumer device, but you, it needs some brains inside of it. You're a hardware designer, you can design circuits, you know how to build all that, and you need some computing power, but you don't want to go as far as having to find the right CPU and the GPU and the memory and wire up all those. You want to take the module with all of that hardware on it, plug it into your design, got lots, lots of pins that come out that can interface to your design and then you carry on with all the bits that you're doing with whatever product is you're making. That's one way to use it. Another way to use it is that you buy a third party carrier board that's another company that's already designed a clever board whether that be for networking or for 3D printing or for cluster computing or whatever it is they designed it for then you go and buy yourself a module you plug it in Okay, so you're plugging in the module of your choice and then it's enabled in whatever robotics, whatever it is that it's into. And there are lots and lots of different carrier boards for specific applications, specific uh, types of project that you can buy already. For example, on this channel, I have a review of the Seed Studio Dual Gigabit Ethernet Router. And it's basically a dual <laughs> gigabit Ethernet router based on a carrier board for the Compute Module 4. The previous generation and then they've done lots of clever stuff to make all that networking stuff uh, work out of the box. I've got a review of it here on this channel and what I may do in a future video is see what happens if I pull out the CM4 and put in the CM5. It should work as far as I know. Be interesting to see. So that's an example of a third-party carrier board in that case to do with networking. And the third way you can use it is using like a development kit like this which means you basically get all those ports put back on the development kit, for example, has two full-size HDMI ports, it's got gigabit ethernet, it's got the normal uh, header that you have, 40-pin header, GPIO header that you have on a Raspberry Pi, and so on. As if you're using it in that kind of kit, basically it's kind of like a Raspberry Pi Plus, and you get everything you need uh, in a nice little box. Uh, in, in this case, even with a, a fan and a heat sink and a little antenna for the Wi-Fi, so it's a nice little development box for software or for hardware. Now the Compute Module 5 is a big upgrade to the Compute Module 4. You're going from that quad-core Cortex-A72 CPU configuration that you had in the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Compute Module 4, and now we're bringing it up to the Raspberry Pi 5 level, that's Cortex-A76. You've also got improvements in the PCI, for example. You can tweak it up to PCI uh, Gen 3, giving you much greater bandwidth. And certainly one big improvement, you've now got USB version 3 support on on the compute module it was version 2 on the compute module 4 so that's giving you 5 gigabits a second uh, USB support so a big upgrade and the prices as we'll look about in a second are roughly the same sometimes even cheaper when you upgrade to the CM5 so if you get the right configuration you can actually save money and get more power more bandwidth so that's a pretty good deal now the way these compute modules work is you can buy them in different configurations your first choice is do you want Wi-Fi on board or not Wi-Fi on board? And that would depend on what application it is that you're building into. If you don't need it, then don't pay the extra money for it. Build your application, your 3D printer, your robotics, whatever it is, with or without Wi-Fi, depending on your need. Then there is how much RAM you want to have on board. Now the CM4 started at one gigabyte of RAM upwards. Now on the CM5, it starts at two gigabytes of RAM, goes up to eight gigabytes of RAM, and we're expecting a 16 gigabytes of RAM module in 2025. 
And then the third thing you need to do is how much onboard storage do you want? Now you can have the light version that has no onboard storage, no eMMC uh, built-in uh, storage. And so therefore you use an SD card and there's an SD card on the IO board that comes as part of the development kit. So you can boot off that just like you would with a normal Raspberry Pi. Or you can have that built-in storage. You can have up to 64 gigs. Now, according to the silk screen uh, on the top corner of the board, we may even see greater storage options in the future. So I'm going to flash up some prices here on the screen. There's a lot of them because there's lots of variations. Do you want the 2 gig with 32 gigs of uh, storage or the 2 gig with only 16 gig? You know, there are lots, lots of variations. Let's just quickly throw up the prices here. So as you can see, for the two gigabyte of RAM version with no onboard storage, you're paying $45. That's $10 more expensive than the CM4. However, things do change quite rapidly. If you go to the 32 gigabyte version with two gigabytes of RAM, that's only $5 more. And in fact, if you move your way up to the uh, eight gigabyte version with 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, it's actually $5 cheaper. So it's actually $5 cheaper for that one. And the 32 2 gigabyte version is cheaper as well and now there's the option of that 64 gigabyte version. Now the CM4 did have some other variations so you had a 1 gigabyte of RAM version with 8 gigabytes of storage that variation no longer exists however as you can see if you go down the list there are places where it's actually cheaper to buy the CM5 than it is to buy the CM4 and the point is the CM5 is basically a drop-in replacement for the CM4. It's got the same design, the same form factor, the same pinout, and basically it should work with existing CM4 uh, boards. Not guaranteed, but basically it should work. And from a hardware design, that means if you're already designing a project with CM4, then you will be very easily able to move over to CM5. If you've bought IO boards and carrier boards for the CM4, then they're basically gonna work with the CM5. As I said, I'm gonna try that out with that Seed Studio board that I've got. Moving over to the with Wi-Fi prices, we can see that the one, the two gigabyte of RAM with no onboard storage costs $50, and that goes up to $95 for the eight gigabytes of RAM with 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. But as it was with the previous ones, the eight gigabytes of RAM version with 16 or 32 gigabytes of storage is actually cheaper than the previous generation. So again, you're getting more for less money. What more can you ask for? Now the development kit comes with the four gigabyte version with 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. And then on top of that, you're getting the carrier board and the heat sinks and so on. So what do you get on the IO board? So new things on the IO board this time around are the power button, just like on the Raspberry Pi 5. There is a header for a fan. You no longer have a separate power supply for powering the board. It comes over USB-C, just like it is when you're running a Pi 5. And you can use the standard Pi 5 power supply. And in fact, that's what you get inside of the development kit. There's now two uh, MIPI camera slash display ports down from three on the previous carrier board. And now great news, there's an M2 slot for either storage or for connecting PCI Express devices if you use the right expansion cable and adapter. Besides that, very much like the uh, IO board for the CM4, two full-size HDMI ports, Ethernet port, two USB-A ports now at USB 3.0 speeds, that's five gigabits a second, micro SD card so you can boot off that if you're using the light versions of the models. And there's a real-time clock battery so that your board always knows the time. It doesn't even need to connect to the internet to know that. Now the Compute Module 5 is faster than Compute Module 4, very similar to how the Raspberry Pi 5 is faster than the Raspberry Pi 4. You're looking at about a two times uh, lift in performance, depending exactly on the type of application you're doing. And when they're running at idle, in fact, the CM5 actually uses slightly less power than the CM4. However, when you crank it up to full power, of course, going up to 2.4 gigahertz now, then it uses more power and that is what you would expect. So it does consume more energy. Of course, you can uh, change the clock speeds to bring that down again, depending on your exact application. Now, of course, once you've got it all connected up and running, you have the options to run basically the same software that you can run on a Pi 5. That would mean by default, a copy of Raspberry Pi OS. That's going to give you a desktop, Linux desktop, with all the tools that you need, including C compilers and Rust compilers and Python and whatever else, it, else you need. 
access, full access to the GPIO, and then access to, uh, as I said, those those uh, camera ports, to the Ethernet, to the Wi-Fi, everything you need to build your project or do whatever development it is you want to do. Now, I'm planning on making a step-by-step -step guide on how you go from taking the development kit or if you've just got the module and the I.O. board, and then how you go from that all the way up to a fully working system, even a headless system which you can connect to over a remote desktop protocol. That will be in an upcoming video. So in this video, what we've discovered is that the development kit gives you everything you need for $130, gives you that four gigabyte of RAM version of the Compute Module 5 with 32 gigabytes of storage, got all the upgrade benefits of going from the Compute Module 4 to the Compute Module 5, got all the benefits of that I.O. board, including an on-off switch now, M2 slot for storage or for accessing the uh, PCI Express, you've got full-size HDMI ports and so on. So really a great way of creating yourself a development kit that is more advanced than the Raspberry Pi 5 in many respects, and it also gives you that launching pad to doing your own designs or to looking at buying other carrier boards. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this first video about the CM5. As I said, more coming soon. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to catch those other videos related to the CM5, then do subscribe to the channel. Also, there's more Raspberry Pi stuff coming soon. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.